recently for his apparent anti-Semitic post, tech entrepreneur Elon Musk is in Israel, accompanied by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. The visuals on your screen are from today when Elon Musk visited various devastated areas of Israel. The Tesla owner's visit, remember, coincides with a four-day truce which is currently underway between Israel and Hamas. But this, remember, comes amid civil rights groups accusing X of amplifying anti-Jewish hatred. Back on the 18th of September, before the war, Prime Minister Netanyahu had met Elon Musk in California and urged him to strike a balance between protecting free expression and fighting hate speech. Elon Musk had responded by saying that he was against anti-Semitism and against anything that promotes hate and conflict. But that was in September. Almost a month later, on the, in fact a few months later, on the 15th of November, Elon Musk agreed with a post on X that claimed that Jewish people were stoking hatred against white people. Musk said the user who referenced the great replacement conspiracy theory was speaking the actual truth. Now, the White House condemned Elon Musk's comments, calling it an abhorrent promotion of anti-Semitic and racist hate that runs against the core values as Americans. Major American companies, including Walt Disney, Warner Brothers Discovery and NBC Universal parent Comcast, halted their advertisements on X, which is Elon Musk's social media site. This amid Elon Musk's first announcing that his Starlink, which is a satellite internet constellation, can be used in Gaza when the war had started and then reversing his decision after the billionaire and the Israeli government arrived at a principal understanding under which Starlink will be able to operate in Israel, including the Gaza Strip, but only with the approval of Israel's Ministry of Communications. Now, this has led to a wider discussion of tech giants indirectly participating in wars. Should they be? Are they obliged to? What are the kind of pressures they face? And who wins in the war between freedom of expression and being neutral? Joining me on the show tonight, Sanjay Jha is an author. Also, Anurag Naidu joins us. He's also an author. Good evening and welcome to both of you gentlemen. Uh, Anurag, I'd like to start with you first. Um, what do you make of this visit, first of all, of uh, Elon Musk going to Israel and visiting all these devastated areas with the prime minister of the country accompanying him? Well, I think, uh, first of all, thank you for having me on the show. You know, I, I have a, Shreya, look, I have a very clear view about the personality that we're talking about, Elon Musk, you know. So before we talk about any steps or any decision taken by the gentleman, we should also know what kind of personality he carries. He carries a personality which is outspoken. He carries a personality where he expresses himself and his thoughts very freely. Of course, he's a conglomerate, uh, you know, owner of, or um, maybe a managing director of a conglomerate, whether it is Tesla, Starlink, whether it is, you know, X that we're talking about recently. But the whole point is these are the business ventures that he has invested in or he is running this businesses all across. But he, as an individual, carries a very strong opinion on certain topics, which he's very outspoken about. So we should respect the space and the kind of personality Mr. Elon Musk is. The visit that he personally carried right now, of course, Starlink being one of the agendas, which is very clearly, you know, stated out that there's there has been a, a you know handshake between the Israeli government and Starlink, which is of course a business deal. But on top of it, it is also out of his business or personal interest that he has. He has gone and visited and he has expressed his opinion. Now, the point here is, in, in a situation of a war, whether it is a Ukraine conflict, whether it is a Israeli conflict, the, you know, we, we cannot come to a decision whether one side is wrong, right and the other side is wrong. End of the day, the lives are lost and no war is, 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 is you know, something that is good for our society. So, but the fact of the matter remains that Mr. Elon Musk has expressed this one point as his personal opinion. And, of course, we're trying to link his personal opinion with the business decisions that he has taken during this visit, which is probably, you know, something that we should look from two different uh, total dimensions. And I have I have a very clear view about it. 
what is wrong for any individual to carry even if it is a political opinion what is wrong i mean if you are a businessman or if you are some other professional you don't cease to be a political activist you don't cease to be a socially aware citizen but end of the day when you are running a, a company like this, which is socially such a responsible uh, you know social media platform you are embedded into this entire structure and the network and the mesh of socially active citizen so you have to be socially aware and uh, being at the top of you know okay. the, the this business if he, if he wants to run it is as an independent business and still wants to carry his personal opinion as a politician or maybe a political opinion in the interest of society or whatever he feels i think we should give space to this kind of people i am i'm done with people telling okay if you're doing a thing you should not be doing b things then in that case all these years we had few channels in india which i don't want anurag, to anurag anurag i'll tell you why there's a problem party. because because when you as an individual as you as a business entity are taking a side in a war when you're visiting the country along with the prime minister of that country you're also casting a shadow on the social media site that you run where there have been already accusations of the fact that you are letting hatred and hate speech perpetuate Absolutely. sanjay jha is it fair for any business I'm person to just go to one country take a side in a war anurag i'll come to you let me get in sanjay jha first uh, sanjay jha is it is it all that we see when a business entity goes a business person goes and takes an a very overt side in a war uh, do we just see it as that well shreya i want to first congratulate you for having a serious conversation on a subject that actually has i think a very very serious international ramifications in the time of war i completely disagree with the gentleman who spoke before me who seemed to be almost like a cheerleader of big tech but let me tell you that today as you and i are having this conversation governments all over the world are paranoid and apprehensive about the role of disinformation misinformation fake news deep fake you even had the prime minister modi talk about deep fake although his own party is probably instrumental in a lot of fake news in india but we can debate it another time the truth is this shreya that at the moment if you look at the the gaza israel gaza the the entire hamas crisis uh, which is frankly speaking uh, entered a zone of uh, a crime against humanity or a genocide you know it is being fueled to a great extent by the kind of amplification of fake news on social media and maybe both parties are responsible but what is the truth the truth shreya is this that today social media organizations like x have actually kind of become very irresponsible because this is not the twitter we knew there is a lot of information which is getting out there which is totally unfiltered and unchecked in the name of free speech everything and anything is being allowed there are no consequences and as a result of that you have a situation today where the polarization is getting from bad to worse is getting aggravated so this is a time actually where a, a head of a social media company whether it's whether it's uh, musk at the moment or zuckerberg uh, when he was influencing the american elections during the trump and hillary clinton contest you realize that the big tech is becoming more powerful than the government and we should all be worried i'm astonished and appalled that you still have people who come on tv shows and say this is great it's okay it's all right he's not taking sides ladies and gentlemen this is a time when people are dying when people are calling gaza the graveyard of children and you're allowing a social media head to appear publicly with a prime minister whom apparently his own country doesn't want him to be there who's been blamed for blatantly violating the rules of international law this is like a literal endorsement of what is going on which is terribly wrong politically immoral legally unethical okay. and a violation of established international international protocols so i think we should all be concerned instead of becoming a cheerleader okay. for mr musk anurag you wanted to make a point please go ahead Shreya, Shreya, one one very quick point, Shreya. Disinformation, Mr. Sanjay Jha mentioned about disinformation, misinformation. I don't know what disinformation and misinformation has got to do with this story. Giving, it's as simple as that, Shreya. Going to Gaza. Now let's understand what is Gaza. Gaza 
is not something where only Hamas stays or very or only Palestinians stay or very Israelis stay. It's a mix of all. There are Israelis, Palestinians, and there are you know elements of Hamas, right? Now, what what is the conclusion Gaza, from this? Visit? The Gaza. conclusion is Tali is going to operate internet from Gaza. So internet is for the people of Gaza, right? I mean, there is no doubt about it that you know there are possibilities of genocide. We all agree. There is no doubt about the when what happens. There are collateral damages. We are absolutely sorry, and this is the state of affair which we don't want as global citizens to happen. We want peace, absolutely. But if there is an internet that is going to be active and live from Gaza, do we oppose that? Is point number one. Point number two: What is controlled free speech? A free speech is a free speech. When you say on social media was free, and you know people like Mr. Sanjay Jai have been like doing so many shows up in, in 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 about a decade in the you know in the past one decade. And every time people, when they, when when it is convenient to them, they say everything about free speech, everything about liberal talking, everything about having no boundaries. But when it does not suit them, they say speech should, the free speech should be, you know, kind of controlled, should be having boundaries. They should. Why should X or any other platform, social media platform, when we call about free speech? A free speech is a free speech. It cannot be a controlled free speech. It is about people. How do do, how do we look at? I mean, it's a responsibility of us. Anurag, that freedom comes with responsibility. I'm sorry, there's no absolute freedom. Freedom always comes with responsibility, doesn't it? Of, of course, that is something that we need to realize. Shreya. I'm saying we cannot. You cannot put a guideline. I mean, if you are building a social media, look at this way. I'm, I'm a technocrat. I'm telling you. I don't know if Mr. Sanjay, but I am a technocrat myself. But I've worked in more than eight countries, right? So I'll tell you. I mean, as a technocrat, if you're developing a platform, right? So the first thing that comes in your mind, you need to, you want to develop a platform which is accessible to all, where people can freely express their thoughts. As simple as that. Now, how much you control to that, or how much kind of a checkpoints you have? They, I mean. X has their own checkpoints. Facebook has their own checkpoint. They have their own, you know, you, you can report things on Facebook. I mean, of course, Mr. Sanjay is very active on X and I've been following him, of course, you know, with all due respect. And I've been very active. You have been very active, so, Shreya. We, we all know that there are possibilities when you have a encounter a fake news or you encounter disinformation or misinformation, like Mr. Jha mentioned. You have all the right to go and report it. And X in minutes or maybe Facebook or any other social media, in minutes they take action, they 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 move that content out of the out, out of the space. So as long as that thing, I mean, if you had if you're actually challenging that it is not efficient enough, that's a different debate. That's an absolutely different debate. That we need to see and find the ways because every federal government has their own structures, whether it is India, Pakistan, America, Japan, they follow their own laws of the land. And it is left to this federal governments or these governments of the okay. public that we're talking about that they should develop based on their own social socioeconomic and the demographic uh, you know composition they should develop their own framework okay. that is an absolute okay. total sanjay Chai, you totally wanted to respond debate. please go ahead is, but the point yeah. is should gaza Shreya. have an interactive i would say yes should gaza have, gaza have a normalcy of life okay. i would say as early as possible we should restore normalcy to gaza absolute ceasefire uh, okay Shreya, my short point sanjay is Chai, please that, go ahead my short point is that the entire gaza situation uh, it is such an ugly configuration that the world is polarized today. You can see that there are Jews in America that are angry with Israel because they're saying that, listen, uh, at the end of the day, you are hijacking, uh, you know, the, the entire Jewish sentiment by posing itself that this is a Jewish issue when, in fact, this is a political problem and needs a political solution. So and, and look at India. We are today alleged to be the disinformation capital of the world when it comes to Gaza. It's among the top three countries spreading very distorted news that is malicious in content. So here is the point. We are not America with the First Amendment, uh, which gives you the right to absolute free speech. There is a reason why you have reasonable restrictions. I mean, does Mr. Naidu know with due respects that the Muzaffar Nagar riots that happened in 2013 were triggered by fake news? Do you know that a number of lynching murders that have happened in India have happened on the basis of WhatsApp rumors? That end of day, there is an abuse of social media happening in this country. And to live in denial on that, simply because sometimes it plays to your narrative, is actually a very counterintuitive logic. Because you've got to think of the larger society as a whole. And that is the worry, which is why I keep coming back to the point. That end of day, whether it's YouTube or Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or whoever, the truth remains that today they are unchecked and a social media company, Shreya, is listed on NASDAQ, 
is listed on the New York Stock Exchange. They are interested in making big bucks. Now, how many people know today that the weapons and the defense industry in America has seen a valuation go up by billions of dollars because people are making money during the time of war? Social media companies are exploiting this situation to increase their advertising revenue. They are in the business of business. And therefore, if anyone here believes, and Mr. Naidu, I hope, doesn't fall into the trap, whatever his political ideology may be, because these things come back to bite you. You know, some people believe that when the social media works for them, they will say, you know, let's not put any curbs. Then why is the government of India talking about putting prescriptions and, and all kinds of strictures on social media? Why did the government of India go after Twitter or Facebook? There is a reason, there is a logic why all governments have to somewhere down the line understand that there is a fine line and this has to be negotiated very intelligently. I'm not saying that you kill free speech, but you've got to realize the social media companies are out there to make money, to make profits, to give shareholder value. That is there, by the way, their charter. So you can't stop them. But to expect them mm. to be civilized, you know, mm. responsible, you know, members of our society, I think that's an exaggerated faith. Can I also ask you, Sanjay Jha, um, you know, the fact, uh, Anurag, I, I will come to you. Uh, just a moment, Sanjay Jha, you know, the fact that these are companies, these are tech giants based in the U.S., uh, and at times of conflict, at times of war, uh, not just that they want to make money out of it, but also the fact that uh, they are facing a lot of pressure from their own government as well. Uh, you know, we had Elon Musk announcing a Starlink in Gaza first initially, and then somehow he reversed that decision uh, after he had a quote-unquote principal agreement with the Israeli government, where the Ministry of Communications in Israel will let them or will, you know, t ask them and give them the guidelines as to how to set up not just Starlink in Israel, but include the Gaza Strip as well. So clearly... Uh, you know, a lot of pressure from their own governments as well on how to operate in times of war. Well, Shreya, a very valid question. Please remember that Elon Musk Starlink has also been a critical player in the Russian-Ukraine war, right? Because Ukraine has been hugely yeah. dependent on Starlink yeah. for getting internet access. Now, here is the point. It tells you how susceptible and vulnerable societies and governments have become to a big private big tech players. Now, they have access, they have invested money in satellites, they have going to fly rockets to different uh, planets. But the truth remains that they are beginning to become more influential and powerful than governments, which is why I'm going to tell you this, that, you know, take, a, take the role of artificial intelligence today. How many countries, prime ministers and presidents even understand what is AI? Nobody knows what's going on. And he, that is the problem. So I think it's very, very critical that media, like what you're doing today, people like Mr. Naidu and myself, don't get carried away by this hype, you know? Let's not get carried away by this entire gizmo, this whole razzmatazz of big tech. We've got to realize we live in a society. Society has many people who have come from vulnerable sections who are victims of, of death, victims of abuse, victims of trolling, victims of profiling and targeting because of disinformation campaign. I worry about those people today actually get abused because the social media makes them appear like X, Y, or Z. And that's what you and I should be concerned about. Mr. Naidu, you and I are very privileged because we probably know English. We have access to certain resources. We know how to tweet and we can probably even take people to court. How many people in India can do that? How many people in Gaza can do that? Can you imagine the plight of those people who are dying today in Gaza who want the fair information to go out, and mm. you have a contentious issue as to where even a hospital, when it is bombed, there's a debate whether it is a self-detonated bomb or was it an attack from another country. That tells you the manifestation of the mm. tragic okay. times that we live in. Okay, Anurag, uh, you wanted to make a point, you wanted to respond to Sanjay Jha, please go ahead. Well, 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 Shreya, you know, you, uh, uh, I would fairly agree with one of the points that Mr. Jha mentioned. You know, I, there's a reason why I have never written on my social media handles about the Israel-Gaza conflict. You know, never written. And even now, I'm not taking any stand. The reason being, 
I, I fairly believe, you know, there is a very high probability of, you know, misinformation around us. And I really don't have access to the first grade information on what's happening. And as an activist, as an analyst, I really don't want to comment on it. So I, I'm going to keep it very neutral because I, I, I would definitely, you know, vouch for humanity, vouch for restoration of peace and nothing beyond that because I don't know, you know, much of the first-hand information what's happening, you know, right? So I, I really don't want to get in there. But even now, I'm not taking side. But the point is, as a business entity, you know, if, whether it is X or Facebook, the law of the land, whether it is America or India, now Dow Jones or NASDAQ, they allow the regulators or allow them to get listed. It is all right from the day of inception when it is not with Mr. Elon Musk, happened to be a commercial entity. Now, if you are challenging the basic, which is a very good point that Mr. Jha mentioned is, should social media platforms be allowed to be commercially listed or commercially be active or operate commercially? You know, because back in the days when the, the, the Doordarshans and other thing, people, uh, things started, they were not commercial activities entities at, at, as such. They were a government-funded ones, which is more of a non-profit initiative to, in, in the interest of giving the right information to the citizen. So do we go back to that date? It's something that we need to know. But the point is we live in a time where we want to commercialize every other thing. If it is listed on a, a, a particular share market, stock market, it is we who go and invest, right? So majority of millions of investors are there, like Mr. Jha also mentioned. There are big business families or big business groups. They control okay. the narrative. But that, that is how we live in. Now, if we challenge that, it's a totally different debate. But while we are challenging this entire corporate affairs, you know, we if we are also challenging one individual's right to carry or have an opinion is also something that we need to discuss. Should this individual be entitled to express his opinion in, in his individual capacity or no? If yes, then we should take side. If no, that is clearly the debate that we are having today. So I would possibly, I would say that, you know, with, with India, we have some some uh, kind of, I'll tell one very interesting thing. When, when the entire OTT platform launched, and I used to be very active in the debates on particular mirror now, it used to be paid to back in the days. Mm. And I know there was one debate on this, how do we censor this? You know, I always said that even now we don't have enough maturity on the kind of content that we are, you know, portraying on uh, OTT platforms. And there are a lot of people from the left, they used to say, okay, let there be freedom of expression, let there be freedom of speech. But I would always say that, you know, even I've written a letter to Mr. Mr. Irani back in the days, we still don't have a good, powerful regulation on the OTT channel that we are working And India is consuming digital knowledge like anything, you know, like, like, like nowhere in the world. So I would say we are we're still mm. lagging. You know, if there are things like that, we should really work towards having the right framework in the place. But rather okay. than as an individual, if somebody is expressing a view, we should just look at it from his or personal expression, but not draw conclusions. It's a totally No, but debate. as an individual, you're representing not just yourself, the country you hail from, but also the entity you own, the brand that you have built, and you are responsible for that. I'll leave it there, but, uh, you know, perhaps there has been no truce on this panel, but there has clearly been some truce uh, in Gaza. The breaking that we are getting in right now is the fact that the Israel-Hamas truce in Gaza has been extended by two days, so that's good news. The Qatari foreign ministry spokesperson has tweeted that uh, the, as part of the ongoing mediation, an agreement has been reached to extend the humanitarian truce that is currently underway between Israel and Hamas. Uh, let's see what comes out of that. But uh, to both my panelists, Sanjay Jha and Anurag Naidu, thank you very much for joining us tonight and sharing your perspective on this contentious issue of Tesla CEO Elon Musk visiting Israel as we speak.